Hi there, and thanks for joining me today on this screencast about the web data grid. And what I'd like to do is show you how to style the background color, or really just style a row from the web data grid. And we'll do this on the client side as well as on the server side. So to give you an idea of what's involved here, I've got a grid that's just bound up to a little bit of data. And I enforced some silly business rule in the background that says, if you have a first name that begins with the capital letter O, then uh, you're a manager and we're gonna style the row as, as being dark red, uh, you know, whatever. So that's done on the server side. The CSS class is set in the code behind and when the grid is rendered, it handles everything as necessary. Now, if we want to do something on the client side, then we could click on this button and it says add bill to the collection. Now I've gone and taken a look at the grid in the client and used JavaScript to find the, the row to apply the style sheet. Now there's a little bit of a wrinkle that you need to be aware of when you apply the style sheet and how you need to write your style sheet rules. So I want to go into that. And so to kick us off and get started, let's go ahead and go into Visual Studio. So once again, we find ourselves with just a plain ASPX page. I've added the script manager and the web data grid to the page. Um, the grid's been customized very little. All I've done so far is added in um, a couple columns to the collection, and, and that's about it. So the first thing that I would like to do is add uh, an event handler for the row initialized. So I've switched over to the properties window, and by clicking on this little lightning bolt, I can see all the events associated with the grid. I, I, I misspoke a moment ago. It's the initialize row event. And by double clicking in this area, it will generate the code that I need in order to handle that event. So the, the C sharp that's required to, to locate what we're looking for is pretty simple. And I'll go ahead and add that in for you. So we'll just take this piece by piece here. The first thing I'm looking at is the, are the event args that are passed into the function. And from there, I can get to the row and then the data item. Now, the data item is the, the item in the collection that's being passed to this row in order to, to render it. So this, uh, I can cast it as a person because I'm binding up here as, from a collection of uh, the person repository. It's returning a collection of person objects. And so I can take a look at the person that's being passed to this row and I can ask whether the first name starts with O. Oh. Now obviously this is silly and it's not something you'd normally want to do. I just did it as some quick way to, to uh, apply some logic to the row. But once we find the item that meets our criteria, then I can simply go back to the event args take a look at the row itself and then add a value to the CSS class. Now you notice from this comment here, when you apply the CSS class to the row, it's being placed in the markup on the TR element. So that will be important as we begin to write our styles. Okay, now that we've got the addition of the CSS class, let's go ahead and add that class up into the markup. So here we are back in the ASPX page and I've added the class of manager. So we're changing the background color to a red, the uh, text color to a white, and we'll make it bold so it's easy to see. So let's run the page and see how it looks. So when we take the first look here, uh, the grid doesn't give us exactly what we're looking for. The, the color of the text is white. That's why you can't see anything against that white background. But the background color is uh, it's not coming through. And who knows if it's even been applied bold. It looks like it, it does get the bold. So the background color is, is definitely not coming through. And so uh, what I want to do is show you how to deal with this issue here. What I'm, what I'm doing next is pressing F12. And this brings up the developer tools from Internet Explorer. And let me just readjust this here. So let's take a look at the HTML. And we can kind of plow through the HTML that's been generated for this page. And I'm going to come into this div here. That's not the right one. And into the table. And what we want to do is find the area in which the markup has been generated for the cell that we're trying to style. So here we go. Open up this T-body. There should be one more table nested in here. And finally, when we come down, we can see that this TR here, this table row, has the class of manager applied to it. Now, what's happening, though, is that the style sheet, the default style sheet for the grid, is there's a rule in there somehow that's interfering with just the manager class being able to style the background. So now I'll switch over to the CSS 
tab here and come to the igdatagrid.css. And the first thing I want to do right now is just collapse all of these so we can take a look at them um, from the higher level and not look at each one of the individual styles. Okay, so I've gone through and I've collapsed the styles here. And I've also brought up the browser window so that we can see uh, how things change as we, we go through the styles. Now, we can come and uncheck these check marks and you can see that it affects the grid in different ways. So this is obviously at the control level. This is the header, header caption. And as we start going down these items and unchecking the ones uh, that we think might be affecting our item, we'll eventually get to one. And you'll notice here that this IGG underscore item descendant tr descendant td happens to be the one that uh, is the culprit in our case. So let's close this off and come back in here. And really what we're looking for is to adjust our style in order to overwrite or override the style that's being set here by this item. So if we take a look at the same form here, we can do T body IgG item descendant TR. Now we know the TR is being uh, that the manager class is being applied to the TR. So we can simply take this and update this style now. We'll just come and do that. And so now when we run the page, we should be able to see all of the infragistic styles being handled as well as our custom one. And so there you go, that's, that's what we want. We have the grid looking the way it should based off of the style sheet and then our extra uh, style here being applied, our extra class being applied to the row giving it the, the look and feel that we want. So now the next step is, is to give us some way to interact with the grid on the client and find certain rows that we want to apply that class to. So for that, let's switch back to our ASPX page. Now there's two things that I want to do. First, uh, below the grid we'll add a button and that will be just a regular input button. We'll have the text appear, add bill, because it's the, the name of the guy at the bottom of the grid. And it'll call a function called add. And the add function will have all the logic we need in order to look into the grid and apply the style that we need to it. So let me go ahead and add that script for you. So moving back up to the top of the ASPX page, I've added a script block here and defined the add function. And so the first operation that we need to do is to find the grid. And doing that, use the ASP.NET AJAX find function. And what we're passing into it is the true client ID of the grid. Instead of just the ID that we put down in the, uh, the markup, we ask it, the, the code behind to generate the client ID and inject it here. From there, we'll get uh, the rows collection. And that's simply done by calling grid.getRows. And then I've defined some variables here that we'll use inside our, our loop. So we'll find the individual row, we'll find its cell the, the, with, that will have the data that we're looking for. Once we have the cell, we can find the value. And then once we determine what we're going to do with the value, then we'll take a look at the element of the cell and update its style sheet. So that's basically what we're doing. We're doing a for loop against the rows. Remember the rows is not uh, a JavaScript array. It is an object, so you do need to call the get length method in order to get the, the actual length of the collection. And then we'll take a look at the individual row by saying rows.getRow passing in the index. And that gives us the row that we're looking for. Now in order to find out the specific item or the specific cell within a row, we can call row.getCell by column key. And that gives us uh, the value based off of the key that we've, we've defined in our grid. If you remember down from the web data grid, when you define a column, you give it the data field name, you give it the key, which is the item we're using right now, and then also some header text. These two are very important, but right now the key is the one that we're, we're looking for. So we pass in the column key, and then from having the instance of the cell, we can call the get value method, and we get the actual value of the cell. From there, we apply our silly business logic here if the, the value equals bill, then, We'll take a look at the row again and we'll say get the element because remember I'm applying this style to the entire row. So we're going back up in the control hierarchy at this point to take a look at the row, get the HTML or the DOM element and from there what I can do is say I want to take the class name and I'm doing a plus equals here because whatever's been applied by the, the style set from the Infragistics control, I want to keep that 
and I simply want to append the custom style that I have here. So I'm doing a plus equals and then a space and then the name of the class. And so in doing that, that should apply the, the style to that row as well. So let's run the page again and see how it works. So here's our grid and we have our new button here for add bill. And so when we click on it, it effectively goes through, finds the grid, goes through all of the rows, looks at each cell, finding the item that begins with bill based off of our logic, and then adding the style to the row itself. So that gives you what you need to know of how to change the style of rows and really any of the elements within the grid on the server as well as the client. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.